Hello Grade 7s and welcome to Natural Sciences. I'm Helen and I'm with you for the next few minutes to talk about all things Natural Sciences. So I hope you're going to enjoy today's lesson. And our lesson today is still about different physical properties of matter, but today we're focusing on the property of flexibility. All right, so what do we mean by this word, flexibility? So here's a new word for you to learn. Flexibility is the property of a material to be able to flex or to bend. So have a look at this pole vaulter's pole. It is flexed or it's bent and because it's flexible it shoots him up and over a very high pole. Flexibility simply means that the material can bend easy. I want you to remember that when something is flexed it is bent. So there my fingers are straight and there they are flexed. So remember flex bend, they mean the same thing. So when we talk about flexibility, we talk about the property or the characteristic of a material to be able to bend. So let's have a look at some materials and some objects and see just how flexible they are. We're going to start off with the pen that I use. And if I were to take the pen and try and bend it, I can't. It is what we call inflexible. It can't bend. What about this thin wooden stick that I might use to push pieces of meat and vegetables on to make some delicious food? Is this piece of wood flexible? Let's test it and see. Well, I can bend it slightly, but if I try and bend it more and more, it's going to break. So it's flexible to a certain point, but then it will break. How about this ruler? All right, let's test it. It's quite a bit more flexible than our little wooden stick, but I think you can see that if I bent it too much, it will break, but I love the ruler, so I don't want to break it. How about this ruler? This ruler is my favorite ruler of all because look at this ruler's flexibility, okay? This is a really, really flexible ruler, but when I let it go from its bent position, the ruler slowly starts to go back to it's straightened form. So it's flexible, but it doesn't stay flexed. It can flex into the opposite direction as well. So that's an interesting uh, property of this particular ruler. What about cardboard? Is this flexible? I can bend it. In fact, I can bend it and I can fold it. It's so flexible and it will it kind of hold its position and its shape. So we see that different materials have greater or lesser flexibility. And when we manufacture items, we're going to take into account the property of flexibility in order to manufacture something that is suitable for its use. So let's go back to our common everyday objects and see which of these have flexibility as a very important part of their characteristic buildup. We'll start with the beach ball. The beach ball usually comes from the shop in a little box and it is all folded up. You take it out of the box and you blow it up almost like a balloon, and it assumes its round spherical shape. And so we can see that that plastic, just like the material that makes up balloons, is very flexible. 
we know that the pages of the book need to be turned and folded. So we know that paper is rather flexible. But what about the material, which is also a paper material, that makes the cover of the book? That is far less flexible than the pages because the cover of the book must protect those pages inside. If the tires on your bike were not flexible, you wouldn't be able to rotate them and gain grip on the road and you would fall off your bike. Likewise, the grips on the handlebars and even the seat have to be slightly flexible so that you've got something to grab onto while you're steering your bike so that your bottom doesn't get sore sitting on a very hard, inflexible seat. So we can see that everyday objects around us have a greater or lesser degree of flexibility. Now, here are a number of items that we think or we know to be inflexible. What would happen if these objects were made out of materials that were very flexible? Let's discuss some of them. What would happen if the roof on a house or on any building were very, very flexible? We would have a problem in that the roof would not be able to be supported and it would cave in. Sometimes roofs are slightly flexible because if they're made out of metal and the metal gets hot, they can expand slightly. So there's a very tiny degree of flexibility. But we certainly don't want our roof to be flexible and cave in on us. In exactly the same way, we don't want the walls of our houses and buildings to be flexible. So bricks are definitely inflexible. An object that is going to do hard physical labor, like a spade, cannot be flexible because if it were flexible, it might break. Or how are we going to be able to put pressure on the spade in order to lift sand out and dig a hole? Imagine if keys were flexible. As you put it into the lock, it didn't have the strength to turn the tumblers inside the lock to open your door. Even things that belong to bodies of animals and plants, they are constructed with greater or lesser degrees of flexibility. So here we have an egg. Can you imagine what would happen if the egg shell was going to be flexible? the developing animal inside the egg would not be able to have the shape maintained of its little surrounding that would not be able to develop properly. In the same way, you would not be able to cut paper if the pair of scissors was very flexible. So you can see that certain items have to be manufactured with materials that are inflexible. Now, what about these materials? What would happen if these objects were not flexible? We have a paper clip, right? There's our paper clip. The paper clip has to be flexible to allow it to open slightly, to allow us to push the paper in. But it can't be too flexible to allow the paper to fall out. So here we've got to play with flexibility and inflexibility. We know that string or wool is very flexible. What would happen if your sandals were not made out of a flexible plastic? It would be like walking on bricks, which would be very uncomfortable and would hurt your feet. If your skipper was inflexible, would you be able to get inside it? Of course not. It would be like a suit of armor. So our clothes and fabrics and textiles are generally very flexible. Springs form very important parts of different machines. 
And springs need to be flexible in order to perform these functions correctly. So once again, these objects have been manufactured using materials that are flexible. But we can see that certain materials, like for example, the cotton material making up the skipper, is more flexible than the plastic material making up those sandals. So we will also make sure that when we need flexibility in a material, we choose a material that has the correct degree or amount of flexibility. Plastic is a very important manufactured material. It's a human-made material and it has two important properties. It is very flexible and it is also strong. Now both of these characteristics, and you'll remember in our last lesson we spoke about strength and today we're looking at flexibility, both of these characteristics of flexibility and strength make plastic so versatile, which means that we can use it for a wide range of uses. So we could have it as hard as a chair, but nice and lightweight, so we could pick the chair up. We've spoken about rulers and pens. We think about our bottles, baskets that we might use to go shopping. Think about all the plastic bags that we use. Plastics can be more or less flexible, depending on the manufacture process, depending on the shape that they have, and depending on the thickness of the plastic. So plastic can be melted and molded into different shapes for different purposes. But one characteristic of plastic that makes us treat plastic with a lot of caution is the fact that plastic is durable. Now you might remember to a previous lesson we spoke about durability meaning the ability to last or the characteristic or property that makes a material last for a long time. And because plastic does not decay or break down like paper for example, it means that plastic is not good for the environment. We're going to spend quite a bit of time in a lesson next week talking about the effect of different materials and their properties on the environment. So I want you to bury that little seed. We're going to come back to it. Let's think about the properties of materials and their suitability for different uses. We know that the handle of your toothbrush has to be inflexible because it mustn't bend when we put it into your mouth. But what about the bristles? They need to be very flexible in order to brush your teeth and not scratch your teeth and hurt your teeth. You wouldn't be able to squeeze the tube if it wasn't flexible. What about your skull? Your skull has to be inflexible. It protects one of your most important organs, your brain, and it protects your eyes and your hearing mechanisms and inside your skull. If your skull was flexible, can you imagine what would happen to the brain inside it? Do you think it would be a very good protection mechanism for that brain? I don't think so. Our tape measure is flexible, but the container that the tape measure is held in is inflexible. So we can see that sometimes materials are combined with different amounts of flexibility to make our final product. And of course, the material that you are very familiar with, the plastic that makes plastic bags, strong, durable, and very, very flexible. So I hope you are going to go around your house today and look at different materials and test their flexibility. But don't break anything, all right? I'm, I, I don't want to be the guilty party here.
But I will see you next time for another natural sciences lesson. But for today, goodbye.